Hello, for the lamb of today, you have the first part regarding the bash programming. This is a review for you. Such that you have a simply an interface for your Linux system, which you use until now you have Ubuntu, and you will want to run commands, you have sh shell scripts such that when you have a prompt, you will simply have that dollar which appears. And you've seen that you have the PS1 variable, you have the PS2 variable, which are for customizing your command prompt. So that part at the beginning where you've got your user and the name of your station. Such that you've got the born shell. So in this one, you've got the prompt with the dollar as well as you have the C shell, okay, which has the prompt starting with the models. <coughs> Then for your born shell, you have the hashtag such that for every script, you will have it interpreted. So it will not be compiled. You simply have a script with the extension .ch. And for it, you will have at the beginning this import as you have in Java, in C, you have the hashtag, then you have the exclamation mark of uh, bin and ch for shell. You can also have here as an extension, the bash, okay, as well as the corn shell or a POSIX. Such that when you want to create such a file, a script file, you will have a touch based on the name of the file and the extension ch, after which you will have the beginning of your file, such that it can be with bin bash, then you can have a command, with fun and inside you can have Linux commands like uh, print your working directory or ls. After that, when you exit the file, okay, when you stop editing the file, you need to make it executable. So you have the ch mode which you, with plus x and you will run it with the dot slash such that you execute the script exactly from the place uh, where you are. You can also define variables. So you have the variable which contains just the letters, lowercase letters, uppercase letters, numbers from zero to nine. You can also have underscore. Okay, so this is like um, in uh, Java. And you also, you shouldn't use special characters like exclamation mark, you have the star or a minus because these have another meaning. Well, when you want to define it, you will have the bin, and this is for the shell. You define a variable, and you can also do the echo. So this is like you've seen last time inside the terminal. You are simply declaring a variable, and if you want to get the value for it, you've got the dollar sign in front of it. Then you can make it just to, to be a read-only type of variable, so you have the read only of the name of your variable, as well as you can unset or delete variables which you do not uh, any longer use. Like you got the onset of the same variable which you defined over here. Then what you can have is that you have several types of variables. You have local variables, so this is present for the current instance of your shell. And whenever you exit that context, the other programs cannot use it. And you just set it in within the command prompt. Then you've got environmental variables like you've seen the path variable. And this one is used by the system variable or when you have the Java home variable also for your system. As well as you've got the shell variables. So you just edit within the shell such that you've got a function and you will have a computation. Mm. Let's see, when you have, you have the difference between this dollar with the star such that uh, you take uh, the arguments one by one when they are separated by space, as well as uh, you have the dollar of uh, at, and this means that you have the list and it will also split it into arguments. But this means that if you have the dollar with the star, it separates according to the space. So whether you have the name 
of your shin and then you provide your argument. So these arguments are exactly like who you do in Java with the string args. And you will have a variable, okay, which you take from your input um, parameter. Okay, so you take it one by one. And here you do the echo. And the echo will simply print on a different line each and every word, meaning that you will have them displayed in this way. And as you can see, you will have four as a loop. You have four and then you've got a variable within an array, after which you have it followed by do. And then you've got this tab, such that you are inside your four and you have this done here leftmost. So you have this way of uh, maintaining spaces um, like in any programming language, but this, this one, it will have to differentiate between what is within a form and outside your loop or your method. So it's similar to Python when you have to arrange the whole code. Okay, then what you can have is also to have an array. So you can say that on position zero, okay, you start from position zero, you have a first name, then you have another name. And when you want to call and to display exactly the value for it, you have it with dollar. But being an array, you put it between curly braces and you have the, exactly the value for it. So it would be position zero, position one, and you have them displayed one by one. Then when you want to compute something, you will have the expression. And for this quote, this is the leftmost one under S. Okay, you've got this uh, quote at 45 uh, degrees. So it is not the simple quote, it's the one, the leftmost uh, before uh, keyboard here when you've got one. And you have the expression where you've got the value. And after adding the value, you need to add the space, okay, in between to have. Um, to distinguish which is the first number, which is the second number. You add the operator in between, and then you have the other value, which is uh, two. Okay, also you will have to display it such that you've got a dollar sign of value, and this is how you have um, exactly what was computed. When you want to compare also, you've got it between the square uh, brackets, You've got here a space after the bracket, then you've got the value of a, so it will be dollar of uh, a, and then you've also got another space before having this equal equal, followed by another space, and then you've got the second value, which is also followed by a space before closing it with a square brace. So you won't write it in this way because it will not be able to interpret. So let's see, in the same manner, you can have addition, you can have subtraction, you can even divide or multiply. Okay. So when you've got the dollar with the star, you need to put it with this uh, slash, okay, such that it will be interpreted as uh, being a multiplication. Then you have a division, you can find the modulus, so which will be the remainder. You can also assign a value. So you put it when it's linked. As you can see, you have no spaces. You have A equal to the dollar of B, to the value of this B. You can, this is exactly what I told you before. When you want to compare, you've got the square brace, you've got the space. Then you've got the dollar of A to receive the value. You've got another space. And then you have equal, equal followed by again a space to be interpreted. You've got the value of B and you have another space after which you need to close the brace. So whether you do not want it to be equal, you have this uh, exclamation mark and equal whether you have the two numbers which should be different. Also, you can do it similarly. Whether you have the equal equal, you can replace it by minus EQ then if you want it not to be equal, you have this not E, non-E, non-equal with a minus. Whether you want it to be greater than you have this minus GT, then whether you want it to be less than, you have it with minus LT. 
whether you want it to be also equal, you have minus greater or equal. And whether you want it to be less or equal, you have this minus LE. So whether you don't want it to add it in this way, don't forget you've got the spaces before and after each and every value. And whether you do not want it to, to be written like here, you can use the minus less or equal. So this minus LE. And you can also have uh, this uh, different than, so if you simply invert the value, so different than false is true. You can also have the logical or between two arguments that you want to compare. So you've got these two conditions and you have the logical or between them, or you can add the logical and between them. So you've got it with minus A. Then what you can also have is to check if you have two values which are equal. Okay, so you have value of A equal to value of B. Or you have it is different than. As well as you can do as before with minus uh, EQ, minus not equal. Okay, you can check whether or not the dimension is zero with minus Z, or whether the string, okay, so the dimension is non zero, okay, so you have this minus n such that the length is greater than uh, zero. Then you also want to see whether the string is empty or not, so you have the str of your value of a. Okay. Then for files, you can also check whether you've got a special block file with minus B, whether you have a character file with minus C, whether it's a directory with minus D. You've seen this D. When you were doing the LS, uh, you were having the D in front and the minus whether you've got the file, after which you were having the rights for the user or the group for the other users with read, write, um, and execute permission. Then, you can also see whether it's just an ordinary file, so you have the minus F, so whether it's not a directory. You can also see okay, if your file has a group ID, so whether it belongs to a group, uh, you also have this uh, minus K, whether you've got the sticky bits, or whether you've got simply identifier for it, as well as um, if you have it named as a pipe with minus P, or if you have some descriptor and you have it associated within your terminal, so you have it with minus C, as well as uh, you can check uh, if it has a user ID set to it with minus U. Then you can check whether it's readable. So you've got the permission with read, write, and execute based on a file. Okay. As well as you can check the dimension whether it is greater than zero, so whether you want to check if the file is empty or not, and even if the file exists or not, so you have this minus E. Okay. As well as you can check either for a file as well as for a directory to see whether it exists or not. Then you've got a decision making. So an if ends in FI, an if can be followed by an else and is in FI, or you've got an if after the if you have another condition such that you would mix the else with if and you obtain l if. Okay, so you've got the first syllable of um, this else. Okay, so that's the two uh, letters l, and then you've got it uh, just uh, mixed with the if. So we've got l if, and then you've got the else. Okay, you've got FI for closing. If you've got a switch case, you have the case which will end in the other way writing it, so it will be ESAC. Okay, well, let's see what you would have here. It is the case when you've got A equal to zero, while you've got the A less than 10, so you've got here a loop. Okay, you have comments in this way with a hashtag. You will have the content within this loop, so you have a do which ends in done. And for it, you want for B to obtain the value of A. 
And while you have this B greater or equal than zero, as you can see, you've got the spaces in between before and after. You will have to display on a new line B, okay? And so you have it on the same line, you add value by value. And this B will be updated such that you will decrement it. And in the end, echo is for displaying on a new line and A will be added. So you will display all the numbers from, uh, you have it from zero, it will be less than 10, and this B will start from the greatest value and it will display. So let's uh, see it here. Okay, this is how it will be shown. You start from A equal to zero, and then this B will get the value of it and it will display it as long as it is greater or equal than zero. It displays on the same line the value and you have a space afterwards. And you have this kind of triangle which is updated. And what you can also have is to have other control loops. So whether you've got a break what will the break do within a loop, no matter the programming language? Break will make you the one compared to continue. Break exits the whole loop, while continue will simply go to the next element. So here, when you will have this uh, A equal to five, it will exit. Let's see. Okay, so as you've seen, you've got uh, five and you did do the echo before and when you've got the five, you simply exit the loop. Okay, so it ends in five when you want to add number by number, but this uh, break will simply make you exit. Then you can also have a sequence of numbers. You want to go through the sequence of numbers based on the separator, which is space. So you've got this num in your array of numbers. And now you want to see, is it an even number or an odd number? So whether you've got this modulus of two as a result equal to zero, you've got the number as being even, and you will have this uh, continue. As you can see, continue will call again the loop, and you will not enter this case when you will have the echo that you couldn't, uh, that the number is odd. So, so let's see, this quote is because of the editing. All right, so you can have it in this one. All right, so you will have the numbers. So whether you've got a number which is even, as you can see, you have this echo here. But having continue, it will simply go to the next number which you've got inside your sequence of numbers. Okay, you can also have a shell substitution. So here you can have a new line and minus E will simply allow you to interpret this sign. So it means that uh, you will have A equal to 10, you want to display the value and to have the slash of N interpreted, you will have the minus uh, E. You can also have a backslash, you can have an alert with a bell sound, with a backslash, you can also suppress uh, the new line, you can have the form feed, you can also have the carriage return or the tab, whether it's horizontal or vertical. Okay. So with minus E, you've got the interpret, so you have to interpret all these escape sequences, and minus N, okay, as you've seen, it will disable to insert a new line. So as it was the case when it was here to display value by value, you do the echo on the same line, and then you are simply going on a new line afterwards. Okay, this is the exercise with a triangle. Then what you can have for a variable, you can also get its value. You've got the dollar and then you've got the curly braces so that you obtain the value for it. You can also have it in uh, this way. So the word will be substituted, okay? 
to your bar. So that's the value for it will not change. You can also have it equal to, and then you will set it to the value, which is this word. Then you can also um, check if your variable is set correctly. So you have got this question mark and you will have the message as well as you have this uh, plus. So you will have it uh, substituted using the add the word. So that over here you can assign a value for your var as being a variable which isn't set and then it will simply display exactly the string which you defined here for your var. So it will be able to be called. Then what you can have is to also display this dollar as you've seen dollar is used to call the value which is associated to a variable and in this way it will display the dollar sign as well as you can have the current day don't forget these are the quotes uh, placed on the left uh, most side so it is under esc and it's before the one okay then you can also get the date with the dollar in front and you see which is your current date as well as you can have the current users and you can store it inside the variable which is users as well as you can display so um, you can add some content as you've seen last time and you can have line one to be added inside users and when you have the cat it will simply display okay and when you've got something like this, greater, greater than, it will simply append this output to your file. It will add it at the end. Then you can have the word count of users as well as you can have it outputted. Okay, as well as you can do it until the end of file. So you can go to each and every line. Mm -hmm. Also, you can have functions. So, for example, here you've got the function hello. And for this hello, you want to have the hello one of the two arguments which are associated to your function. So, as you can see, you have the name of the function which is hello, and you've also got two names. Okay, the first name and the last name. Such that it will display those values, and you also call another method which you define here such that you will display a string and in the end you will return a value such that in order to get this return value you get it with a dollar sign and then you've got the question mark and you will get this value 10 for it which you can have it displayed afterwards so don't forget you will use touch you will have to edit it you need to make this file executable as a script. So you have the chmod plus x for the name of the file, and then you execute it with a dot uh, slash. Mm, let me correct this one because of the PowerPoint change. These values, these quotes. Mm. I think. As you can see, you have the hello one of the two arguments, which are these two. You will have this function, which is called, so it will display a string. So this is how you call another function. It doesn't have any argument. And then you can also display the return value, which is received based on the dollar and question mark, and you can display it with the dollar of, uh, according to the name of your variable where you did store it. Then for it, you will have several applications and that first you need to check whether a number is prime or not. Then you want to see the first n prime numbers. And after that, you want to have the Fibonacci sequence. So this is the one with one, one, then the next one is the sum of the previous two. So you've got two. Then you have three, you have five, eight, and so on. And you've also got the homework with these cows and bulls. We have a sequence of numbers like these ones, one, two, three, four, and one, three, two, four, for example. And the number of bulls are whether you've got the same digit placed on the same position. So this one, one, and four, four. 
they are your bulls and whether you plant them mixed, they will be cows. Right. Then you also want to generate some random string to see whether or not it's a palindrome. So if you read it from front to end or from back to the beginning, whether it's the same string as well as you want to have an IP. So you've got a sequence of four numbers and you want to have for it, which would be the network, the broadcast address. Okay, so the mass review, the default one to be easier for you. And for it, you want to have the first um, station, last station, as well as the total number. So you would come here. So this is based on the logical end. In fact, based on the mask, and you will have numbers like this. So you compare and you will have the network address, which you do by having the logical end between the bits, between the bits of the IP and the mask. While for the broadcast address, you need to invert the mask, and then you've got the logical or bit by bit. So let's see here. With a prime number. So you would have, again, you have the bash with CH. Okay, or you can have it in this way, bash. Then you will obtain your uh, number. Okay. So you will have a number, let's say that we've got uh, 11. Then you will have to divide. And for this one, you will have a control value, whether you did divide it or not. So let's say that we have it uh, equal to false, okay, which is zero. And then we will have a four. And for this four, I can write it in this way. I will have an I. I have the divisors from what? I have from two until it will go to the number, which is my number. And I go until the middle such that I can divide until it. And uh, for it, I also want to increment my I. Okay. Then for this one, I will have the do and done. Okay, such that for my loop, okay, I will have to check if and then I have these braces and I will have the spaces such that I will get the dollar and I can put it also in this way and I will want the value of my number and O, whether the modulus with uh, I Okay, it will be equal, so we have minus EQ with zero. Okay, it means that here we have then, and we need to end in FI. Let's see whether we have it as being divided. It means that our control variable div will be one. And if I already have a number, which is a divisor of my number, it means that it's no point of searching another one. So I have a break. Then we need to check if the number is prime or not. So we have an if. Okay, this if also ends in FI, not to forget. And what do we need to check here? So we have if the number is equal to zero because we didn't study this case. Okay, we have the divisor from two. So whether it is zero or okay, or we will have the number of number as uh, being minus eq of one. Okay, we have then as being we have an echo number in not front. Okay. Also we have another case. So we have the L if we can also have whether your divisor is equal to zero, what will happen? 
it means, so you make it equal to one, whether it got uh, divided. Okay, so that you have it then. And inside the echo, you will say that you've got a prime number. Or else, okay, you will have um, the echo saying that the number is not prime. And this is how you would have it. So this uh, 11 is prime, while if I put it to be 12, it will be not prime because it was divided. And we also tackle these cases when the number is equal to zero or one, okay. And we have it as being not prime, okay. And if I put it five, it will be prime. So this is how you do it for the first exercise, as well as after that, you want to see which are the first uh, and prime numbers where you also read from the keyboard. And for reading from the keyboard, you've got a function called read. And touch it. Okay, this is the first exercise we're doing. That the number is prime. Now I want to modify it and to see whether the number which I read. So I want the first n prime numbers. Okay, I will have to do the echo and on one line. I want to have the number of primes, um, let's say n equal to, all right. And in this way, I would also read a value, which is, for example, n, the number of prime numbers, which I've got. Okay. So it will be displayed and it will want you to read it. So in this way. And now I think like this, I want to have several prime numbers. So in this case, I can also define a function. So for this function, I can have a function called uh, check primes. Okay, which I have it in uh, this way and I put it between curly braces. Okay. And let's see, first of all, this number, which I had before, let's see if it works with tab, yay, okay. Okay, so this one, I need to get it as my argument. So it means that I have it equal to dollar of uh, one. My divisor is zero, okay, I start from two until the number which I get as an argument and I need to increment uh, until I reach the uh, middle of this number, the half of it, then whether it gets divided, okay, I have my divisor as uh, an answer as being one, and I break it, and this one needs to be repeated until I reach this condition and it won't be valid anymore, okay, or if it already gets divided, it will simply exit this loop because we've got a break. Then I want to check the number, whether it is zero or one when it's not a prime number, whether your div remained unchanged. It means that your number is prime. And, uh, okay. and if not, it will be this uh, zero. So what we can do here is to have it based on the return type. So this will be return of uh, one, and the other one will be return of uh, zero. Okay, so here we will have our result, result as being uh, zero, and then I want to simply go through all uh, these numbers. So I can have a j equal to zero, I will have a while, and for my while I will have one. I will have my result based on which I want to be less than the number that uh, I read, my n, and I have a space here. Then I have a do and done. For my do done within, uh, I want to do the check to call the function 
check primes of the value that I have of my value j, which will simply be incremented, okay? And for it, I will simply have to check if I will get my result. And my result is with the dagger in question mark. If this one equals one, okay, you will have to display it with fi. So whether we have it equal to one, we will have the echo on the same line of my double of j, and then we've got the space. Okay, then I also want to increment my result. So my result will be equal to the dollar which I've got based on, I've got my result plus one. Okay, then I end it with fi, and I want my uh, j, which is here. j will also be updated, so I can write it in this way as being j plus one. Then I have uh, my done. Okay, and we will have it displayed one by one. Okay. So we will have just these kind of numbers, whether or not uh, they are prime or not. And this one will be a return of zero also. So if I want to have five numbers, it will simply display them. Okay, so we will display just those for which the result was one. We increment the control variable and based on it, we will simply check it and we get the answer of this function, which is check primes, as well as we've got uh, the j as being the control variable, which will be exactly a new number in the sequence, which is simply given as an argument for your function, which is check primes. And whether this one returns uh, one, then it means that you need to increment your result as being how many numbers did you find until now. Okay, so if I put here 10 and so on, you've got those numbers. So I will also have this one in somewhere in the chat. Okay, and I will stop the recording. So let's see.